All right, so you've gone out and you've scattered props all around your scene that you're making here. Maybe you've got some rocks, a few houses, maybe you found some fences, some horses, whatever it is you put down. The next thing I want to take a look at is the actual navigation system in Unity. And we're going to go ahead and just have some sort of evil cube chase us around. For those who have watched some of my other series, we know that evil cube is going to be pretty nasty. So let's go ahead. We're going to open up the navigation window. And again, we'll just come up to Windows, come down to Navigation, click on it to open it up. I've already got mine docked over here. I'm going to come down to the Bake tab, and we'll come back to the settings when we go ahead and create our, our Nav Mesh agent. Uh, but for now, all I want to do is go ahead and click Bake. And it's going to take a few seconds, depending on what you have in your scene. It's going to go out and bake this bowler, a Nav Mesh for us. And you'll notice it because in your scene view, it's going to be all blue. Uh, there's a few things I want to point out here. If we zoom all the way out, we see all the blue areas. These are the areas that he can run, or our AI is going to be able to run on. So the angle's here, too steep. Now we could set it up to where he could jump up here, run along the edge. Uh, I'm not worried about that yet. I just wanted to point out the areas that are too steep for him to climb. And the way this works here is that's based off of that. And also, if we go ahead and look at our trees, because they have colliders on them, let me zoom out a bit so we can see that a little bit better. Uh, you notice he can't run through the trees. He has to run around them. But if we go over to our house, let me just go ahead and click on the house. This will be faster. Uh, we notice there's nothing like that around there. And that's because if we go ahead and look at this mesh, there's no collider on it. So we're going to go ahead and actually just add a collider. So I'm going to go ahead and make another empty. And I'm just going to call this Colliders. Now you don't have to do it this way. I tend to like it to, to be separate. And I wanted that to be plural. And then under that, I'm going to go ahead and make another empty here. And I'm just going to add a box collider. You generally want something that fits nicely around your shape. And we can have more than one. This is a compound collider. So what I'm going to do is this big section over here put a box around it. They'll do the exact same thing for this one over here. So with the box collider added, we can see the little green spot there. I'm going to go ahead and move it over. We're going to want it to be wider. Just stretch it out. I don't exactly have it centered, do I? So we'll go ahead, bring it in a bit. It doesn't need to be that wide. Now, this is a spot where he will not be able to walk. So you'll want to pay attention to how wide it is. And to be honest, this would be much easier if I pulled it out front. Just to get the width down. So that's about center. Yeah, we'll just make it a little bit wider than the actual wall itself. Perfect. Now we need the length. So that's about center. We'll go ahead. We'll start stretching it out on Z. There we go. Now, of course, when we get into 3D modeling, we can go ahead and put these on there automatically. There we go. That pretty much encompasses everything down around the bottom. Let's actually go ahead and add some to the Y as well. Just so when he starts jumping, he can't um, you know, jump over the small step. He's going to have to jump really high to get up there. Now, we can go ahead and put another box along the whole top here. I'm not worried about that because right now we're just looking at the nav mesh and that's all I'm concerned about. So I'm just going to duplicate that one. Move the duplication over here. And then scale this one to the same size that we need over here. And it looks like it's going to be pretty close to the same size. So I'll just shrink that down a bit on the Z. It actually went negative. Whoops. Let's keep it positive. It doesn't really matter for the sake of what we're working on, but I just like to keep the numbers themselves positive as far as the scaling goes. So we'll shrink this down a bit more. 
Just kind of scroll around, get a good look at it. Looks like I have to move it over here more. And I made it too thin. So that's good. Let's start dragging it in here. And width wise, it looks pretty good. It's right down that corner. It's not at this corner. I can't see it over here. So actually, to be honest, I think they might have been the same size if I didn't move them. But you should get the idea, right? You want to go ahead and block in the area you do not want him to travel it. Now, since this house is not going to move, I'm going to go ahead and click this static. Yes, we'll make all the children static. So that means everything under it becomes static. And what I really want to be able to do is go ahead and, well, later on when we get into the light map, we'll go ahead and bake that. But for now, I want to make sure that this navigation static is set. So I'm going to come back into our navigation tab. Let's go ahead and hit bake again. And this time we should get that little bit of fringe around our house that he can't run. Now, you'll have to go through and take a look at all of the objects that you have added and make the changes that you need. But if we go ahead and take a look here, that's perfect. So let's go ahead and we'll make our QB now, add his agent. Then let's go over the options for both of them. And then in the next video, we'll start writing our first script. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down. I'm going to keep this open. I'm going to go ahead and create a 3D object. We'll create a cube. I'm not sure why he's down so low. We'll just put him right here, somewhere near the front. And I'm going to come over to the inspector. We'll go ahead, we'll name him Evil QB. The name doesn't matter. What does matter though is that we add a nav mesh agent. Here we go. And the first thing I want to point out is this whole height radius. Uh, these two values, you want to match up with the values here. So our, our agent radius is 0.5. Same here. Height is 1. Let's go ahead and match these up. Now this next one, the max slope, 45 degrees, that refers to this. So anything greater than 45 degrees, he's not going to be able to go up. As far as the radius goes, that's just how much room he needs to, to go around stuff. So if we had a really narrow alleyway here, and it just wasn't thick enough for him to get through because of the radius, it would go ahead and not put any blue there, but this is more than thick enough for him to get through. Uh, same thing for the height. If we had some overhangs, uh, well, like we do on the house here, if we made it high enough, it would, again, go ahead and not put any nav mesh controls right here because he wouldn't be able to go through it. And the last thing we're going to look at is the step height, which is right here. And that's basically just like it sounds. If you have stairs in your game, this is how much he can step up. Let's go back to the nav mesh agent. And there's a couple other things here for speed, angular speed, acceleration. Uh, those are pretty self-explanatory, just how fast you want them to be able to move and turn. So that's actually it. And because I did go ahead and make a couple changes here, and because it's so quick, I'm going to go bake it again. And then in the next video, we're going to go ahead and start making our first script.